Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, can you hear me or see me? If anyone's in the chat, we only have a few people here. You guys could. Uh... Oh, hey, Roland. Cool. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Thank you. So, uh, if anyone wants to join me, <coughs> let me know. I could bring you on the camera just by inviting you. It, it might be fun if you guys haven't been on this webcast before. Justin, uh, I know you've been mainly on the chat, but if you want to get on, let me know. Either audio or video or both. So, <clears throat> I wanted to discuss uh, everything that's going on in governance and, okay, so Justin's only able to listen today, so, so yeah, I wish uh, there was someone here that could maybe give us an update on the latest with governance. I think about a week ago, we had our first ECAF ruling, so. Uh, I'm sure that caused a lot of discussion back and forth. <laughs> I was busy with the hackathon, so unfortunately I wasn't able to really uh, keep track of everything that was going on. I know there was probably some articles written. I'm, I'm losing my voice too. I think uh, uh, the hackathon really um, was, <clears throat> yeah, it was uh, it was <laughs> pretty rigorous. So. Um, so just wanted to maybe make it a quick, uh, meeting here, but, uh, is there anything that you guys in the audience, uh, want to cover? I know Justin, you have a, a, a Trello board with, um, Hey, how's it going Mel? So yeah. <clears throat> um, so yeah, let me know what you guys want to discuss. Uh, Justin, maybe if you can um, let us know about what's going on with the Trello board. I, I did check it out. Um, actually, I just I joined your Telegram, uh, but I guess it's a way for people to collaborate on different v versions of the Constitution or discuss other aspects of the referendum process. So yeah, let me let me <laughs> let me click on it right now, just and then we'll we'll, we'll review it. Okay, so um, this looks good. Let me sign sign. Uh, let me sign up for this real quick. So um, actually, I could just look at it for now. I could view it. So there's a temporary poll. Should uh, we allow the public to view but not edit this board? <clears throat> okay, pur purpose of this project end with at least two constitutional proposals that are put to a single side by side referendum vote that are inspiring enough to <clears throat> get a consensus vote. Okay, so that's the purpose. So <clears throat> if you, um, if you are, hey, how's it going, Thomas? Sorry, my voice, I have a frog in my throat. So, um, but uh, yeah, it looks like a great. <clears throat> great uh, effort here to try to get gather everybody together to uh, filter all the constitutions so that we could narrow it down to a, a vote and uh, <clears throat> so let me see so I think that's the main purpose of it so sign up to the Trello uh, board I'll, I'll put the link on the YouTube video and then it's also on this chat here where we have a few people. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and, and Thomas, yeah, if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to be on video, let me know. We can get you in here. Anybody else as well? Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we could talk about the EOS. Uh, okay, I'll invite you, Thomas. So, uh, you know, we could talk about the hacking as well. I think that's an interesting topic. So. 
So I'll invite you, Thomas. So, <coughs> um, so, hey, how's it going, Thomas? Doing great. Can you hear me okay? Yep, yep, we can hear you. Super. All right. So um, the video is not on, but... Um, I'll figure out where the controls are. Okay. So, so yeah, that, that was interesting. We could probably discuss the recent hacking. And um, I always, you know, it was, it was very recent. So I think people are just starting to uh, just talk about exactly what happened. So, um, you're, you're still, Thomas, you're, you're still, um, yeah, it's, there we go. Oh, okay, cool. I did dive into the configuration and like say, yo, no, yeah, that's the camera. No, seriously. They yeah, use the cat. No, yes. Use the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a pop it's windows there. machines. If I were on a Mac, it would have worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Windows. <laughs> Sorry, my, my voice is like, uh, yeah, the, the hackathon was, yeah, a long Cough word. drops, seriously. Yeah. I like, I have a pile of cough drops on. <clears> and you know, the podcasts and things, that's when my throat immediately starts to tickle. I yeah, like yeah. The jacket, man. They got that Leo Sio logo on there. Yeah, yeah. We, they we, gave, just, they, we just scored the jacket. They gave it, they gave every participant, like, to back on a backpack, a jacket. Like a coffee, coffee, uh, uh, what are those? Uh, yeah, containers. Uh, what is it? Just, just notepad. Like everything. They, they hooked everybody yes. up. It was just amazing. Nice. These are nice too. These are Patagonia. Oh yeah. And then uh, even the backpack is like high quality too. So they, they really <laughs> took care of everybody who participated. So yeah, they, they really uh, are not afraid to pull out the stops for the for the hackathons. They understand the importance of the DAPS. Yeah, it's hugely yeah. important. I mean, that's that's. The long-term health of the EOS mainnet is uh, tied to DApps, you know, solving real-world problems and bringing in users who want to get things done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's 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 smart, very strategic. Um, I think I, uh, you know, the other thing too, I think that in terms of why my voice is, is that is, I think we had the we had the fires. I'm in uh, Northern oh, California. Oh, yeah. So Oops, I think around I, the world, if you're not aware, Southern California is on fire. Northern California is also on fire. They are burning yeah. California at both ends. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, I you know, I, it's just like I don't notice it, but I think whatever I'm breathing is also affecting my throat. So I have no doubt of that. Yeah. So, but hopefully I'm staying inside. So I guess, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'll. But anyways, let's let's get to uh, you know to maybe some governance topics. I know Mel mentioned the EOS hacking recently. Maybe we could discuss that for a little bit and then go into what the latest uh, of um, all the I guess EOS Alliance uh, yeah. um, meetings. And um, so I've been away for a little bit uh, for about a week just, uh, and I'm just trying to catch up. But let's say let's start with the the EOS uh, you know cool. Singapore. Um, account and actually, uh, can we get a second? I'd like to talk yeah. uh, governance first, if that's okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so we're taking a break. We just, last week was week twelve of the Alliance twelve week. Uh, just walking through all the constitution drafts and sharing them with people and trying to understand what they were. Uh, and at the end of last week, um, Dimitri from I can't remember which what his affiliation is, is one of the Asian uh, block producers. He's in Shanghai. Um, but Dimitri put together a, uh, I'll meet one. Thank you, Justin. Uh, put together his amazing spreadsheet online, this Google sheet with uh, a column for each of the major uh, constitutions that are out there, including Telos, as well as the original version one and the original version two unmodified. And then the one from EOS Amsterdam, uh, and then one from EOS New York. I forget what the, what else is in there. And then horizontally, each row is a different topic. And if that constitution says something on that topic, then in that cell is like the, the piece of that constitution that talks about that thing. So it gives you in one place the ability to look at all of those constitutions um, by theme. And so what is this? Well, what do they all say about topic X? And you can look at that horizontally. Uh, it, it's an amazing effort. Uh, and extremely helpful. Uh, 
And so that was a great way to wrap up week 12. We're sort of taking this week off. And what we want to do in the, in starting next week is start off a, what we imagine is probably going to be a six week series. Justin could say more about that than I could, uh, wherein the community can shoot for by week six, I hope, uh, to have written a ballot to put into referendum that would list two or three or however many is appropriate alternative constitutions for the community to vote for. Because within six weeks, we think the referendum will be live in production. And, you know, you don't just vote for a constitution by sticking it on the ballot. You actually have to say, by voting for this thing, you're asking for this to occur like to insert this constitution at block height X to take effect on this date and time. I mean, there's, there's more to a, a ballot than just putting a person's name on there or putting in a constitution. You have to say, how does it get implemented? So there's some trickiness to the ballot language. Uh, and within six weeks, the plan is to have a ballot written that is clear, clean, impartial, that lays out the choices and puts those choices into the hands of the token holders for a, a binding vote. Uh, and we will either ratify the version one constitution or we'll replace it with a ratified version two, three, four, whichever, whichever one it is uh, that, sh that shows up. So we've got a couple of weeks for the people who really like say version two, uh, which has no base layer arbitration to either say, we love dance perfectly as written, don't want to change it, or I hope, since I know Dan likes to put out drafts, he doesn't tend to put out finished products usually, uh, and not as when he first puts things out. I would hope the version two people will take Dan's starting point and tweak it until it really provides their vision of what they think the chain wants and needs so that when it goes to a ballot, people have a final, you know, if they vote for it, that becomes the new constitution, boom. Uh, and so it's, We've got to get away from airy theoretical conversations to writing actual constitutional language. At least two of them, maybe three, hopefully no more than that because it's too much, I think. Uh, and then writing a ballot that gives people a choice for those, let's just say it's three uh, options. Um, and then we'll run, they will, we will run an election and within 120 days, we will have a new constitution or the old one will be ratified or something. Um, but the chain will not be the same after that. We will, we will, we will have gone from not quite knowing what our governing philosophy is to having chosen and ratified one uh, in, a, in an indisputable way. And we will be the first public blockchain that I'm aware of in existence that will have made a fundamental decision uh, in an on-chain fashion like that, unlike Ethereum, unlike Bitcoin, um, really unlike any of them. I mean, maybe there's another one out there I don't know about, but that's monumental. I mean, that is, that's a world changer right there. And we're going to be the first ones to do it. So, so six, six weeks, six is... weeks to finalize the ballot language, finalize the constitutions, um, practice voting and getting people ready and then starting the get out the vote campaign. And our votes for constitutional amendments last for 120 days. That's, that's the plan. Okay, great. Is there a, a specific date, uh, like on the calendar, that's six weeks? I am yeah. going to defer to Justin Buck, who has volunteered <laughs> to coordinate the Ballot Crafters Group, the referendum folks, and the various different Constitution uh, fans uh, to bring them all together in the way I just described. It, it might just be like the, the new year almost, like the, the very beginning of the new year, 2019. Maybe, let's see, we're most of the way through November. So yeah, six weeks would be like right around January 1st, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, that'd be neat. Well, we're going to start <laughs> next week. It'd be like, we're starting in the new year with uh, the new but, well, That would be kind of coincidental and neat and amazing. Yeah. So yeah. yay. Awesome. All right. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. So yeah, yeah I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to making sure that everybody who has a clear vision of what they think should be done gets their uh, version their way on that ballot. Uh, I don't want some like crippled version two with, you know, poison pills in it put forward that's the, intended to make it lose. That would be wrong. Uh, just as there shouldn't be some crippled, you know, rewrite a version one that's intended to be awful 
to drive voters away from it. We need the best thinking from all the different philosophies uh, to put into play and put in front of the uh, the token holders. Yeah. Um, okay. So Roland has a question here. He says, where can we see the list of the versions? And I think that, that that's Dimitri's. Um, yeah, I've got the link handy. Let me stick it in uh, uh, chat. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to post URLs. Okay. Yeah, it's, it looks like it worked. Yep. So Justin says January 1st is a Tuesday. Uh, I need to get more color from the teams building the referendum voting tools, but January 1 sounds like a, a great proposal for day one of voting. Okay, yeah. So that, that that's well, I guess we'll work through the holidays, which we, <laughs> which we were probably all going to do anyway, I suspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, that's when the, Life. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it might be a little bit, uh, yeah, tough, but. Uh, so, all right, and now I'll put the link also on the YouTube video once we get That'd that. be super, great. And also the link to Justin's uh, Trello board. Yeah, that'd be, okay, so I'll do those two things. Uh, yeah, so excited, excited. So, uh, and then you just, be, uh, you mentioned something about um, like, yeah, so I, I figure, Two or three <clears throat> on the on the ballot is is what you guys uh, seem to be thinking. Um, yeah, there doesn't seem to be like nine different philosophies of how to move forward. There's really basically two, maybe three. Uh, and so, if each of them can be represented by you know best in class thinking uh, in, in an actual constitutional uh, draft, um, I would love for that. And that doesn't mean you can't then amend the constitution over time. Of course, we will, uh, but having a ratified constitution with a clear internal vision, I think is huge and okay. a really big deal. The, uh, there, there's a couple of risks, by the way, I want to make sure that people don't think it's all, you know, sunshine and, and ponies and unicorns and rainbows. Uh, we have never done a vote before. We've never had a contested election before. No one's ever written a ballot before on our platform. So there, things are ripe for confusion. Um, the, Balloting the referendum software that's been created at, with great effort and care uh, by EOS Canada, EOS Nation. Um, I'm going to forget who all the contributors are, but there are so many of them, and there's I'm so in awe of their work. Uh, they, they have zero barrier to entry, so literally anybody could um, uh, put a uh, an initiative up. Um, you know, EOS Authority, as well as EOS Nation, Generios. Um, it's been a really good cross uh, cross BP effort. Um, anyone can put up anything, which means I ex fully expect that the ballot will be flooded with, you know, we love BM and and stupid little one off initiatives. You know, what's the best betting portal? It's ours. Vote for us. Like that means anything just annoying nonsense. Uh, and they will be badly crafted ballots. People will write things that they personally love, that a an independent neutral person will look at it and say, if we voted yes for it, I'm not sure what's supposed to happen. And those are evil. So, but we can't put in a barrier to people submitting ideas. So how do you prevent the voters from being overwhelmed with thousands and thousands of, of initiatives, most of them badly written, and supported by like one dude in his basement with nothing better to do with his life. Uh, and the answer has to be, um, I think, uh, that the portals, the voting portals have to give the users the ability to filter out uh, spam and uh, focus at least initially on things that are well formulated and or have broad support. Uh, but that's gotta be under the user's control. There can't be, you know, uh, there's no, no hidden cabal that's going to prevent your idea from getting on the ballot, right? Um, if you have a good idea, for heaven's sake, shop around with other people, take the time to craft the ballot well and get support uh, from voters. Because as a voter, you don't have time to wade through 10,000 proposals. You need to see the ones that are actually relevant. Uh, and it's going to be, I believe, on the shoulders of the voting portal creators to provide those filters that let you narrow down the scope so you as a voter only look at the ones that are uh, realistic or relevant to you or important to you. Uh, and that's that has to happen within six weeks.
right? Yeah, and that makes sense, and and that's fine. I think as long as you know, there people can submit it. The blockchain will have you know at least all the proposals there, and then it's up to each individual front end provider or voting portal to decide what they want to to display. Yeah. Um, um, I've encouraged ballot crafters to come up with some score scoring system for what makes a, a ballot initiative, you know, well written from a technical perspective. Uh, something like a 100 word summary of what it is, an impact statement of if this passes, what happens, uh, as well as the actual text of the of the initiative. Those are standard in in most places. Uh, and then separate from the initiative or separate from the ballot is when you'd have all the arguments in favor. You do that somewhere else like in Telegram and in Medium and so forth. Um, so, but this gotta be, these things have to be, they have to live on chain. These proposals have got to live on chain. Uh, and, and with this referendum uh, offering, uh, it does that. That's, that's Yeah, that's great. That's, that's huge. Great. Yeah, that is fantastic. So yeah. Mel has a question, you know, which is, you know, uh, kind of the, you know, how do you filter what could or couldn't, uh, could not be relevant. Right, exactly. And that is the question. I don't have I don't have the answer, I'm, I'm, but I'm posing the question. And I think part of the answer to that is going to be, what do people who I respect think is worth voting for? Or what do at least uh, three block producers have said, yeah, we think people should pay attention to this one or it should go to the top of the list? Or what's already received, you know, the most votes from other people, meaning it's att attracted attention, People are paying attention to it or uh, somebody's posted some sort of, I don't know, bond saying, hey, um, I'll put some EOS into this bond to push it to the top of the list and I will forfeit it if it doesn't pass. There's some skin in the game for you. Um, yeah, that's actually a great model. And it's almost like a free market of voting portals, however they design. The right. Prioritize it. Um, it, it. And it has to be very much, you know, user driven or consumer driven uh, in, in each portal has got to have the freedom to do whatever it thinks is right. Uh, just as we've done with, you know, block producer assessments and, and proxies. And there's at least two or three very active channels that look at how uh, to rate uh, block producers on how technically excellent they are and whether they're doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, the same kind of thing. I'm sure I'm confident will happen for the ballots. Different people will have, uh, you know, ideological assessment, you know, the people who are, you know, strong uh, anarcho-capitalists or, or very minarchists or really want to see our chain go in a very minimally governed way uh, should probably list, here are the ballots you should be looking at first. And if there's, if there's movement is big enough, they could even petition some of the, uh, some people to make that a, a built-in filter. Uh, and there has to be, I'm sure, I'm confident, I don't know this is true, but I'm confident this is true that for each portal, you'll be able to put in some kind of a, a fixed URL that if you click on it, you go to that initiative where you could vote on it, right? So, and so they could send you an email or put it in a posting somewhere. Uh, so we don't want to see artificial barriers to voting. We don't want to see artificial barriers to uh, initiatives. And at the same time, we have to have some way to emergently, uh, collectively create filters that work for us. Um, and that means a choice of filters, lots of them. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And again, we are in new territory. I don't know that anybody's done it the way we're trying to do it here. If they have, I'd love to know about it. That would be really helpful for the designers. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone knows of any others, <laughs> let us know. Um, yeah. And by the way, you know, when it comes to like the worker proposal system, uh, which I think is going to be on the ballot as well and, and it's in its own uh its own ballot initiative will come out. Uh, we found that there was something called, oh, I can't remember the name now, but it was an alternative cryptocurrency uh, that Dash, thank you, uh, has, for over a year, I think, has run their own version of what we call the worker proposal system. It's very sophisticated. Uh, and uh, the WPS team learned a lot from studying what those guys had done. Uh, didn't copy it, but did learn from it. So prior art out there in the world for how to filter initiatives, um, how to uh, make things publicly visible, how to indicate um, to potential voters that they should look at things, uh, how, do you, how, how to help these voting portal uh, designers and, and authors 
to create usable filtering systems, that's tremendously important. So please, if you know some prior art out there, um, let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Dash is is one of the the well known ones, and also BitShares as well, which is kind of a sister uh, sister. Technology. That's true. Yeah, BitShares does have a, a kind of a WPS, a primitive one. It's the one that I, yeah, obviously Dan had Dan Larimer had worked on previously, and it inspired some of the earliest writings on WPS. Yeah. All right. And then what? So the question also is okay. What what do you foresee as uh, you know? Uh, proposals uh, is it i mean the constitution is the main one but it seems as though there's going to be separate sure. smaller um proposals yeah uh most most referenda will will be about changing the chain that's what the referendum system is primarily about um because if it if you want to do something more voluntary you don't need the constitution for that you just do it it's like you don't have to write a referendum to have a dap you just go make the dap all right. So the referendum really is about those choices that the community as a whole have to make um, that binds all of us and that the minority has to go along with the majority. Uh, and hopefully that's a very small set of decisions because I don't want to live in a society or on a blockchain where everything is up for a vote all the time. You know, we, I think we want regulatory certainty. <laughs> I think we want to have the rules be fairly stable. And I suspect they will. I, I don't think that there's going to be you know, constant overturning of, of rule sets. Uh, you know, if someone said, hey, let's reduce inflation from 5% to 2%. Um, if somebody said, let's increase block producer payout, uh, which I personally would be in favor of, actually. I think that um, we were, I think most of the modeling that was done assumed at least a $10 token or a $7 token. And at $5, ish or even below which it is currently on today the 13th 15th of november um it's very hard for upper block producers to make ends meet uh, at the current token value so i think increasing token payout you know i'd vote for that even if it was only temporary um and that's the kind of thing that deserves a, a referendum yeah. Okay. That makes sense as well. Uh, just, you know, all the important system parameters, uh, I think. Yeah. Installation of, of Rex, the, the Rex token, that's a change to system behavior. That's, that's guy, my belief, my understanding of how the, the rule set works, uh, is that would need to pass a, uh, a referendum before it was installed, um, is by contrast, a, a bug fix that doesn't change chain behavior. The block producers just have to agree that that's a valid fix uh, and then they can install it. Um, there was an extensive essay written recently by one of the block, one of the leading block producers on what does and doesn't require a referendum. Uh, and that's a, a very good uh, article for folks to look at. I'll go find it real quick if you want to take questions. Yeah. So any, uh, any other questions out there? And um, and when we're uh, and I have a question in terms of referendum. Uh, I haven't followed the the kind of the voting as closely uh, lately, but I mean, how 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 many, like, what percentage of votes are we getting these days for block producers? That's that'd be interesting to to know. I, I don't know what maybe what the best portal is voting portal maybe um but i know you get 30 votes for each block producer and right. so whatever total amount i guess divided by 30 right so uh um so i don't know how many total votes uh well remember that each token lets you uh, is is a multiplier and so you have, you can vote for between one and 30 block producers saying, yes or no, I want that person in. And then each one that you name gets however many stake tokens you have added to their total. By contrast, for a referendum, you would get, a, let's say it's a yes or no vote. You either, you either your yes or your no gets multiplied by your number of stake tokens. And that goes into that side to be added. So oh, that's Okay, so there, there's a 25%. Yeah, 
It is so Justin has some uh, statistics here. It says twenty five percent. So is so so does that include because this is thirty like everyone gets thirty votes. So uh, so that's well, gonna... no no no. Don't think of it that way. Okay. Don't think of it that way. Um, okay. When you think about if if you have a hundred tokens staked, then you, then your vote, one vote, has a power of a hundred. And if you vote for three block producers, they each get a hundred added to their tally. Okay. If you voted for a fourth one, they would also get a hundred added to their tally. And so you only get thirty names on the block producer ballot that you can check. Yes or no, yeah. Yes, I want that block producer. And so if you voted for one, that one would get uh, your, your power of 100 added to their total. If you voted for 30, each of the 30 would get 100 added to their total. Okay, so, so under vote for block producer, you're kind of leaving power on the table, if you will. So so you're saying the vote is just that that's an actual vote. Uh, when Yeah, when and so the, but the thing that just got pasted in by, uh, by Justin shows that of the billion uh, plus tokens in, exist in token supply, about 50% are staked, 52% are staked, and about 25% of avail of all possible tokens uh, are currently voting some, somewhere for something, block producer, obviously. Uh, and so it's 256 million tokens or 25% of all tokens um, are being used to choose block producer. And that's important because you need at least a 15% turnout for a referendum to change the constitution. And if we weren't seeing that much turnout, it would be a real concern for me. So a 25% yeah, turnout is really good. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. And I'm actually hoping really to get above 50 there and maybe total stake, maybe 70 or so, 75, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it's up to, you know, it's up to the owner. Do you want to keep it staked or not? And if you want your tokens liquid, you can't stake. So I'm hoping Rex will, will, will double like <laughs> this, uh, this, uh, participation right now. It's, uh, I think it could. Um, I, I didn't quite catch that last thing you said. Oh yeah. Um, the Rex, the Rex, uh, Oh yeah. I don't know how Rex is going to work. I've tried to understand it, but it's just hard for me to grasp. Well, essentially, if you stake, you get money. <laughs> you earn money from staking, so that's going to uh, increase participation significantly. Um, so, it, and if that's the case, that that's fantastic. Then I think we'll we'll probably double our participation. Uh, that seems likely. Yeah. So, and then to me, that's uh, that's you know most organizations want fifty percent. That's a quorum. That's a that's majority um, and. So that's a stronger, uh, higher turnout. It does indicate stronger, uh, community sentiment. Certainly. Yeah. What about a ceiling molass to stop whales? Um, that's well, not going to happen. You'd yeah. have to, you'd have to change the constitution and you'd have to change the code both, uh, in order for that to, uh, to happen. And the problem, the challenge with it, in, in my opinion, well, that's just my opinion, is if I'm a whale and I want to vote my million tokens and your ceiling is 100,000 tokens, then I'll just make nine other accounts and I'll put 100,000 in each account and pretend that each one's different. And there, look, I've got all my voting power again. So uh, the challenge, Mel, to stop whales uh, is to get the whales to agree to be stopped by changing the constitution to allow for account voting um, you know, one person, one vote rather than token voting, one token, one vote that we have today. Um, and that would have to go through the constitution uh, amendment process. Now they might. Um, one thing I've heard advocated and I, I kind of like is adding a second, uh, like a house of Lords and a house of commons have two different chambers, if you will. And so in one of them, one token, one vote, sort of the house of Lords, right? But then also a house of commons where it's one, verified identity one vote and you might say certain things certain system changes only go through one house or only the other and certain system changes might need to go through both houses and so both the whales and the us unwashed masses the mob if you want to call us that uh, would have to approve it but um, we're not there and the 
original design of the EOS ecosystem has always been a plutocracy ruled by the wealthy. It's always been set up one token, one vote because it's computable. Uh, and it uses the technology we had available when we built it. Um, and when we have a strong identity solution, then adding in, you know, account-based voting or, or, you know, one person, one vote, uh, that starts to become much more realistic. Um, and it does have, you know, unlike tokens, which you either own them or you don't, that's, I don't know of any way to fake that. I don't have any way to, to fraudulently vote your tokens. I mean, you can steal someone's keys, but you can't like manufacture fake tokens and vote them is my point. Whereas you can manufacture fake identities. People do it all the time on the internet. Uh, and so your one person, one vote approach opens up attack vectors that aren't present in token voting. That doesn't make it better or worse. It's just a different approach. So yes, we everybody wants to solve identity on blockchain anyway. So I'm not saying we don't do it. I'm saying be aware of the risks. It's a heavy lift. So, uh, yep. Uh, now, people are curious about identity on blockchain, by the way. I want to mention uh, a website that I like called oneworldidentity.com. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, and oneworldidentity.com is a place that tracks uh, over 200 different projects and initiatives that are attempting to uh, oh, wow. resolve the, uh, the identity challenge uh both you know mostly blockchain but not exclusively blockchain wow that's awesome yeah there's a lot out there yeah it's great to, to aggregate all that um so many identity companies yeah it's just uh <clears throat> so somely says uh, approval voting that's the kind of voting we're using yeah yeah that's what we do if uh, folks want to understand that better i have a um an article for you on medium um that i wrote back in the in april back when i was um working at block one as an employee So we're going to have a lot of links for everybody here. <laughs> well, there's a lot to, to know. There's a, there's a lot of work that's been yeah. done already yeah. uh, that's important for people to, to get up to speed on so they understand where we're coming from. Uh, and uh, A lot of good links. Yeah, a lot of great links. So I'll, 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 we'll put it all on the, on the video. Um, so Roland also just mentions 25% of stake tokens are being voted by 39,000 accounts roughly. Uh, that's 7.8%. So I'm uh, so 25% of stake tokens. I know 50 some odd percent are staked. So a quarter of those are 39,000 accounts. I'm wondering how many accounts are, are really, really active. It would be interesting to know, but I would say, well, maybe a couple hundred thousand people is, is a good estimate of people like that are somewhat active. Um, what do you yeah, I, we have, um, um, a pretty broad base, you know, I mean, the, whatever you want to say, whatever else you want to say about the year long token distribution, it did, uh, touch a whole lot of people. And I think by one count, it was over 300,000 individual accounts in Genesis. I think that's right. Okay. Um, okay. 300,000 at Genesis. Okay. So that's, that's, that's what good... I recall. And that's, that's a big number for any blockchain ecosystem. Uh, and we're not, you know, they're not all equally active, obviously, any more than they're all equally large, but. Uh, so what? And a lot of new accounts have been created since then, and people, new people are coming on board, and that's, you know, we need to have we need to have people doing useful work on the chain. <clears throat> do Do you know if that? Um, um, I'll let you. Uh, <clears throat> bless you. Um, One more sneeze. No, apparently not. Okay. So, so yeah. So, uh, did that include exchanges? Because I know exchanges probably have eighty percent of the people. I mean, like twenty yeah. percent are off, are like on chain, and then yeah, yeah. But you're you're not really going to show up on the user account if you're holding on an exchange exclusively and don't have uh, a mainnet account. I mean, you 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 are the 
beneficial owner of those tokens, but you're not able to really partake fully in the ecosystem, I don't think. So we might be at a million then if it's like, let's say 200,000, like 300,000, 200,000, like 300,000. I wouldn't know how to go about guessing what what the user, what the account is of people who own tokens uh, through exchanges. Unless yeah, the exchanges want to publish those numbers or something. Yeah, true, true. But I, I think there's a lot of people just on the exchange. But they're, you know, it's, they're more like speculators, but at least they're still engaged and interested in EOS. So, yeah, I mean, I would count them so and i would think that there's just a lot more that are like that they just kept everything in the exchange and didn't want to bother with doing any of this uh uh kind of um conversion to 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 the main net so so yeah maybe a million i, I would say that that's not i, I mean i, I did just guess maybe but, so maybe so so um all right so that's great thanks for the update uh, uh happy to do it i'm really hoping that we see um uh, a lot of activity, uh, folks helping Justin with his project of knitting together these different um, projects that are all running in parallel and, and turning it into a vote on a constitution that is understandable by the voter that when something passes, there's no ambiguity about what just happened. Uh, and so that that to me is huge. Uh, it's kind of the holy grail of blockchain governance is having a binding vote on a constitution on chain. And that's going to be epic. Um, and so no matter which constitution you favor, and we need everybody involved, you can't not just the people who like, you know, version one or two or three or four or whatever, everybody who's got any skin in the game on governance needs to help Justin make this happen and make sure that we have a fair ballot and that each constitution that's put forward, it's in like a GitHub repo somewhere. And there's a version of it on chain where it's not disputable, which version you're voting for uh, and make sure that those versions are clean and well thought out and coherent uh, and, and could be used to run a chain. Uh, fortunately, we've done a ton of work. So, uh, so we're not trying to do this from scratch, but we have a deadline, right? It looks like January 1st is like feeling like the deadline for a lot of folks. I, I love that idea. Um, and so please, the, the more, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, whatever, get involved in this and um, help make this, make this happen. I will absolutely honor the result of the vote. And if, you know, version two wins, if, version one wins or version three wins, whatever it is, that's what we're going to live under and we're going to make it work. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Who's we're getting close Yeah, six weeks away. And so I think, you know, we'll start building the momentum with, you know, all the different, uh, you know, I guess, uh, groups out there and just, uh, hopefully we'll have some also just some, um, I don't know, just discussions throughout, uh, leading up to it, I'm sure. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think that that that's great. It's exciting that we're getting so close. So. Yeah, I'm just really delighted that the alliance is able to be helpful. Uh, we've been translating things and getting volunteers from various block producer candidates to to translate ideas back and forth. Uh, we're going to have to translate the ballot, obviously, because uh, we have a lot of Korean and Chinese token holders, people who speak Spanish or German or whatever, uh, who need to understand what the vote means even though the ballot itself will be in one language, the explanations have to be in local languages. Uh, and that's another part of the, the project as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to helping make sure the Alliance is a completely neutral uh, facilitator of this project. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to this community finding its voice through the referendum process. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's um, gonna be really cool. And I got to run, but thank you for letting me come on. All right. It sounds good, Thomas. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. And it's exciting. We'll, we'll just kind of, yeah, we'll hopefully have you back just kind of le leading up to the whole referendum. So. We'd love to. Take care. Bye. All right. Sounds good, Thomas. All right. So that's awesome. So, so uh, Mel has a question. I'm sure EOS sidechains and other platforms will want to mimic the completed constitution. Yeah, possibly. Uh, you know, I, I think 
there might be some room to differentiate as well, Mel. So, yeah, if EOS goes one way, maybe it's if there's enough interest for the other chains, they they might want to differentiate as well. So, uh, so that's another, <laughs> uh, I guess, strategy. Uh, and Justin says, get out the vote. So, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I think that's the one thing we should get a, everyone active in this process. Just get everyone prepared and learning as much as they can, so that when it comes to vote uh, beginning of next year, that they'll you know they'll be you know confident with their votes. So I think that's going to be important. Just prepping everybody up, uh, those with you know you know any amount of stake, just just to participate in the process. So. Um, so Samali says, uh, my guess is that most chains will have different constitutions to serve different interests and markets. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think that's a, that's a good choice because, you know, this is a lot of experimentation. So, so I'm hoping that we have, we're able to experiment as, as widely as possible. If we're too similar, uh, then we won't know what, what's working. So, so I, I do think the idea that we have all these other um, uh, chains experimenting with different things is, is actually better. You learn, we will learn quicker uh, about, you know, what's, what's working. So, uh, so if EOS doesn't go V2, I predict V2 will pop up in no time. <laughs> so yeah, Justin, I, I agree with you too. I think there's en enough sentiment uh, uh, out there to, to really, uh, have a chain that's more, um, more immutable, more like code is law. So I think there's definitely an appetite for that. So, so yeah, um, I know there was a couple, any other questions, uh, and we, we can, I'll, we'll probably try to end at the hour. We have about 13 minutes. So uh, I know Mel earlier talked about the, the hacking incident for, from the, um, uh, what is it? Airdrop DAC, EOS Airdrop DAC, and uh, yeah, that was unfortunate because they they presented their company just at the conference uh, I was in locally here in the San Francisco area, and you know I was excited about their their project. They're you know they're allowing people to uh, run their airdrops at a discounted cost, essentially thirty percent of what it normally would take to do. An airdrop because of the way they 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 run their uh, airdrop. So essentially, they they there are these claimable tokens that if you don't claim it, you know they'll they'll they can take the tokens back, and then you can kind of run another uh, uh, um, I guess airdrop claim uh, period, and and then if if people don't claim it, then you can kind of take it back. So it's kind of a reclaimable token process, which I thought was good. You save money doing it that way, but unfortunately, the smart contract had something i guess wrong with it so uh so um i don't know some some hacker just took all the tokens as part of the airdrops or a significant amount of tokens and then there then there was some affiliation of uh, i guess eo singapore which is a block producer block producing team and they were somehow so one of their accounts was associated with the hack and then someone was saying well they got hacked for their kind of account, and so they they weren't involved. So it's 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 it's, it's very interesting. I, I don't know the details, but there there seems to be a lot of information going on. Um, so in terms of the governance angle, I think not only that. I mean, you have a lot of these issues pop up with phishing, key thefts. And thanks for the article. I'm, I'll put that in the article as, uh, or, or below our, our video as well. But um, yeah, so it's it's interesting. You know, all these incidents are happening, and you know, people are really having to think hard about what governance means. Whether you know, because these are unfortunate incidents, and you know, uh, yeah, I think that that kind of sways people to. To try to have more intervention, uh, but you know, people who support V two will, you know, have to stay strong on principle about, you know, how, you know, that's a, a reality that people have to 
be more careful about their smart contracts, be more careful about their keys, and that even these big, uh, I guess, efforts and projects should be very, very careful before uh, releasing uh, their their product because some things like this can happen. So, but you know, we'll see. I mean, how it sways people's uh, thoughts uh, about their about intervention and governance. So. Uh, so, anyways, thank. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll post that link. I, I don't know any other details. Does anyone else know any additional details about the EOS AirDrop DAC hacking or 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 incident? I mean, I'll I'll click in the link. Maybe uh, let me see. So EOS IO dot SG. Uh, they have a medium post that that outlines their side of the story. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so it's interesting. I'll, I'll go ahead and read the details maybe uh, at another time, but it, it does seem, a, it, it, it's short, uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll uh, hey, <laughs> be like, so we got about 10 minutes if you want to join me i'm gonna since you're a regular belay uh, i'm gonna invite you if you if you want to hop on so uh and anybody who else wants uh, who has video or even audio wants to be hello uh, hey how's it going long time belay <laughs> yeah yeah i have to, uh, to oslo uh, i'm i'm here for the uh bit space eos thing what uh, whatever it is um hello justin uh i'm um uh yeah so 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 uh tomorrow is some bb event and then on on saturday there is something more generic but yeah how are you guys uh, how are you jim yeah that's great that's so funny you're you're in, you're going to the oslo event i I know a lot of people from San Francisco. Uh, I, w I was participating in the hackathon, and there were some. Uh, there was a conference right after, and so a lot of people there said they were going to fly to Oslo uh, right after. So a lot of people, uh, you know, are, are really busy doing kind of the, the the block producer tour or like the EOS tour all around the world. So it's glad to see so many events going on. So let me let us let, let me know how, how how you like it there and. Um, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and for me, it was uh, quite simple because it's one and a half hour flight, so so, <laughs> so it's just next door. Yeah, Europe is nice because you could go anywhere in you know yeah. a couple hours. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's fantastic. Uh, so governance. Uh, what, so Vile, what, what what's your thoughts? Like, what version are you gonna like support or at least leaning towards? Oh. Well, uh, I, I I haven't read uh, uh, the proposals through, but but I'm I'm now against base layer arbitration. I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, so uh, which which one is supporting non base layer? Okay. So, okay. So yeah, there's a a few variations uh, for that. Uh, and uh, real quick, uh, uh, Samuel just uh, wrote that uh, in terms of the back to the the EOS um, uh, Singapore hacking incident. He, they they might have found the hacker's GitHub account. So hopefully, there's some some more uh, information because yeah, it's sad to see if you know somehow like a block producer is involved in the hacking incident. That's that's bad for the reputation for the the entire ecosystem. So hopefully, they did find. The hackers github account and can can you know trace that and i guess or you know uh redeem their their reputation i think so um but vila yeah so so i think uh in terms of the constitutions version two is is uh the the main one that i think people just generally support dan and i think that the, that that makes total sense and i, I do like version two so, so version two might be the strong candidate, even though, uh, it, you know, is very uh, quickly done. Uh, and so that's the main uh, non-base layer arbitration version. 
hopefully I'll, I'll submit my uh, our version like as well. Uh, so it, it needs to be tweaked. And I know Justin and like we, uh, hopefully we we'll see if it makes sense. But we'll, we'll maybe have another non-base layer arbitration version. Uh, oh. EOS New York also has a non-base layer arbitration version. It's a little bit more subtle. Uh, so uh, there's there's three aspects to it. I think, or no, a couple aspects to it. So version two just uh, just is about code fixes when something goes wrong. So it's, it doesn't have any any restitution or anything like that. So it, if a code breaks, then it, version two says, okay, block producers can can authorize. Uh, fixing, updating the code for that smart contract, um, um, and you know the outside of, of requiring the actual uh, smart contract developer to do it themselves because that's another option, right? The smart contract developer can just update it, right? So, um, so, so that's that's version two. The EOS New York version allows not only updating of code but some kind of restitution if someone is registered or if there's a contract uh, registered on chain through uh arbitrators uh, and forums that are are also on chain then they will will uh they will enforce the awards of those arbitrators so not only code fixes but also rewards is what uh new york uh, the New York Constitution allows, I believe, and and so, but this also doesn't have anything uh, to do with base layer arbitration. It's more like if if a DAP layer kind of case comes up, or uh, any anybody that has a contract, uh, official uh, uh, you know contract between each other, that they will um, they will provide restitution. So it gets a little bit more. I guess there's more intervention because there's uh, like you, you, you talk about adjusting accounts in in terms of uh, value in the accounts rather than version two where it's just code fixes. So so I think yeah, that's yeah. that's the difference. So so those are the two kind of varieties of uh, non-base layer arbitration constitutions. Um, yeah. I. I, I I like both of those versions. They're they're subtle differences. Um, there's to me, I could I, you could go backwards too. I think if you want code as law, I think you could go backwards a little bit and and even be more restrictive than version two and just say. Uh, and this is a little hard to do technologically, but BPs have the power to make these changes, right? Whether it's restitution or code fixes. If you could design a yeah, system yeah. to require referendum and and only referendum, like a multi-sig, uh, to allow BPs to do anything, that's to me the strongest uh, system where you need a referendum and and then the block producers need to be in a supermajority. So they're tied to the the vote of the referendum. Technologically, I think it's very difficult to do though. I think you need to to yeah. redesign the software to to prevent block producers to for uh, for you know uh, to disable their power to do that so right now the block producers really you know there's block producers really have significant power uh so mm -hmm. so anyway so that's that's the that's a subtle version which is probably hard to implement technologically so i think version two and the new york version two and the new york version are, are the main ones so are the main ones yeah and and by the way reason why why i switched from uh, arbitration to no base layer arbitration was uh twofold one was your argumentation for uh, against it and 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 then marcin's uh very clever idea to to make very solid layer uh in a, in the form of that so so if people don't remember um uh, here, uh, uh, sh short, quick recap. Um, Marcin was proposing a system where uh, uh, different um, universities would have different contracts that that you would enter into by converting your EOS to the specific uh, currency that uh, that universe is using. Uh, for example. Uh, 
uh, Deloitte was was used as an example. Uh, Deloitte could have their own smart contract where uh, when you put EOS there, you will au- automatically get a Deloitte EOS, and everything which is uh, every transaction which is made in Deloitte EOS is under Deloitte jurisdiction. So, so I think that was the second reason why I'm now for, against base layer arbitration. Okay, great to hear. So, and Martine also was at the conference this past, uh, I think, what was it? I think Monday or, or Tuesday. Uh, and so he has an updated presentation that hopefully will be uh, on online. So we'll, we'll try to share that when that's out there. But he, he does go into the details of that jurisdiction, the custodial uh, jurisdiction that uh, at the DAP layer that I think is could be very effective. So, so, uh, so <laughs> Justin has a question. What happens if a user participates on a DAP that uses voodoo law arbitration and yeah. the user gets scammed by them? Uh, how okay well, okay well a uh, real uh, libertarian and i'm not i'm i'm very left which means rules and regulation but but real real libertarian would say that uh, they are they have the freedom to be screwed <laughs> yeah and then and then in this and then the other point too with more of the jurisdictional uh, custodial uh this jurisdictions that let's say like Deloitte is the example people give, there would be rules against this voodoo law in those jurisdictions. So if you choose a good jurisdiction that that uh, excludes these, uh, um, you know, these this kind of voodoo law, then you're fine. So you're, you're choosing a, if you choose a voodoo law uh, <laughs> jurisdiction, then you're kind of like, that's, that's kind of, you know, <laughs> that's your responsibility in a way. So, but there would be plenty of, of jurisdictions that don't are custodial jurisdictions that don't have that kind of uh, voodoo law. So I think people will have the choice to go somewhere else uh, before like getting into trouble. So, um, uh, so are you saying more like reg form than really uh, than really full DAP layer only? Um, well. Well, the, the 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 DAP layer will will be the jurisdiction. So I mean, so there will be a custodial jurisdiction where the DAPs probably will reside in. So it'll be like a Deloitte jurisdiction. Like you know, they're gonna be the the custody of the transactions that flow within this jurisdiction. Or you could create like a community, like a, to me, a Ulix community jurisdiction where I you know I like Ulix, right? And so. Uh, so we'll have a jurisdiction like with Ulix, and so they won't accept, you know, voodoo voodoo law in that jurisdiction. It'll be it'll be just based on all like common law, like restatement of common law, restatement of business uh, code, and and I think it'll be very effective. So so we'll have a, a lot of good, uh, I think, good legal uh, structure around uh, many of the jurisdictions, and then the DAPs could just identify which jurisdiction they want to build on top of too so it's not necessarily just one dap and one user it's like a jurisdiction where many daps can just just select right yeah and and, and technically uh that would be very much pure dap uh dap layer because it would be implemented as a dap so 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 i i cannot think anything more dap alike than that dap <laughs> yeah true true exactly so yeah, I'm excited about for that too. I feel like you know, after the soon after the referendum vote, wherever we go, that I mean, I, I, that's kind of the next step, of building out these DAP layer jurisdictions. So, um, okay, he still has his doubts. All right, Justin, we'll convert you <laughs> eventually. So, um, so yeah, so and 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 Justin has a, a Trello and working document. Uh, as well as a Telegram channel. So, Vile, if you're not in that, uh, feel free to join. So, oh. it, it's it's a yeah. synchronization working group because everyone's working on various constitutions, and and this is a way to get everybody together to discuss their their different versions. It's it, sh- it should 
maybe if you could resend it, Justin, uh, the Trello link, also Telegram group. And uh, so, all right. So, so any other any other ideas? Uh, any pressing concerns about governance in general? Or we're 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 about time. Maybe we could go another ten minutes if you want. Since Vila, you just hopped out on a little bit, uh, kind of later in this uh, broadcast. So, any other any other pressing concerns, guys? Vila, anything interesting? Oh. Well, meanwhile, people are are uh, thinking what to bring up next. Uh, I I would like to say that the referendum uh, beta version was quite interesting. I I, I checked it out, and and uh, there are a lot of cases to take care of when when uh, building a referendum system. But um, I'm also kind of worried. Um, we discussed like a month ago or uh, so with with you about uh, how referendums should be uh, built. And if I recall correctly, you you said that there should be multiple options. And I said that true and false should be enough. Uh, if I rec recall co correctly, I uh, it had been so long time ago that I don't remember very well. But but now they have implemented um, uh, the yes no solution apparently, and despite I used to be for it, now I'm also doubtful about that too. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so, but but I kind of still think that it would be good practice to make all proposals yes no. It 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 would make everything simpler. Like uh, well, we'll see how how that will turn out. So maybe if you can explain why you originally had that idea and then why now you, you changed your mind about it, that'd be interesting to know. And because they <laughs> have implemented, it seems, that that version. Yeah, uh, I, I was thinking that there will be anyway different kind of uh, options for... for uh, for for uh, for many questions, like uh, not all questions in the world are unfortunately yes no uh, uh, questions. Um, but if if you try to, I I'm a, I'm afraid that if you try to make a complex issue just a yes no question, then uh, you you will end up the granularity uh, is like binary and i think that the binary correlation is is not uh good for every question in the world <laughs> so so yeah okay okay so so it becomes too granular maybe it's too uh and so how how would you from that perspective uh, design the the referendum like how would that differ from oh. yes no vote? It would just be comparing constitutions Wait. and uh, this or that. Is is that the, the idea? Like well, virtual oh, yeah, one uh, two? Uh, yeah, my my uh, previous uh, idea was because I was thinking constitution. Uh, I mean referendum uh, more wi um, widely uh, as, with all kinds of questions. So in case of this referendum. I would just ask, do you do you like this? <laughs> yes, no, and and then we would end up with a solution with uh, most likes, basically, uh, gotcha. like Facebook. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so that's interesting. That's interesting. No, that's uh, so that might not be that bad. Well, so because there's going to be a variety of constitutions, and if they go head to head against each other, uh, either people. If you have a yes no system, it's just a matter of who has the most, and you can mo vote for multiple versions, and it'll just be rather than if 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 you have a, a case where you're 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 pitting one constitution and another, or maybe three, then there may be one that takes away attention from another. Uh, so you probably need some system where there's a t two rounds, right? And typically that's what happens in, in, in a lot of 
here in the U.S. a lot of caucus votes where uh, once you have an initial vote, you get like the top, uh, like the top three, or I think, um, and then and then you, you you vote again. Like let's you go from uh, there's an elimination, one round elimination. So there's like let's say you start with five people, then you vote and you, you remove one person, you have four people. Then you you vote and then you remove one person, you have three people. Then you vote again and then you remove it two. So you you, you kind of go one on one. So there's there's no uh, dilution. There's no negative. Um, uh, like uh, uh, there's no dilution of votes from one uh, to another. That is, it's really eliminating to till you have just two of the strongest, and then you vote. So because if you vote amongst, let's say, let's say you get down to three, maybe more people, uh, you know, like number two or three, uh, more so than uh, like the the top vote, but they're they're splitting the votes, right? So, oh, yeah. so the number two and three uh, should not be like the people who, who uh, are voting for two or three should not have kind of like the, uh, uh, be kind of injured by splitting the vote. So, so you you want to you want to get to the the one on one vote. So to me, that process and I think that process has been used for a very long time, where it's like each round you just eliminate one. Uh, or you, you don't have to do it one by one. You could eliminate a lot of people until there's like three or four or five, and then do each round, or just you know top three and then and then get to the top two. So there's different ways to do it that where you eliminate the splitting of votes uh, problem. So, but, but 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 I think Bernie Sanders is a living example that that doesn't work. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, because uh, I I think that the U U.S. Uh, been really different the president presidential ones if uh, all the candidates would have been on the same line and and equal uh equal the elimination didn't work well because uh uh you you ended up with uh that many people didn't want to vote for <laughs> so so yeah, well, it's just, yeah, it's hard to uh, say. I think that that one is like if, if they were. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it, it still would have probably worked out because I mean, the, Bernie Sanders was essentially going against Hillary Clinton, maybe uh, other candidates, and it whittled down to one. So at least unless he had the majority in the the kind of the democratic but you're right though kind of maybe in a broader sense rather than having any parties maybe that was the problem where you have parties that determine it and, and before in the presidential election they didn't have parties so what happened was you could be a different party and everyone was voted on by the uh, electoral college first and then they whittled it down so it, it, you're right it, it didn't have this distinction of parties it actually had uh, you you know like no party affiliation, and then so everyone had the opportunity to be amongst the, the 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 group. So let's say Bernie Sanders, if you did like him, would be amongst Trump and Hillary, and then the top, uh, let's say two, would go head to head, right? Eventually. Uh, so um, so yeah, so so I think that was uh, that was like people who didn't even like each each other. I think uh, in the early elections, I, I guess. Aaron Burr was one and Thomas Jefferson, they didn't get along, but they were like vice president and president, right? <laughs> or, or something like that. So it's like, that can happen. Like, a, a, you know, in, in this modern scenario be, you know, a Democrat being a vice president to a Republican president or, or vice versa, right? Um, yeah. So, so and I think I'm, that's fine. It's actually, it may be better that way uh, to not have these distinct parties be, uh, be the the f first filter. It'd just be everybody all together, and then you identify and will it all down to two. Um, uh, and yeah. you know, and I don't know. People, I, I'd say there's a strong case for the electoral college system, and there's a reason why we do this uh, in a. Uh, but but that's another discussion because there's a trend oh, in yeah. America to to go away from the electoral college. So 
another 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 uh, discussion for another time i guess so. yeah 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 indeed but 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 but, but yeah you are right uh, uh my bernie sanders exp example is not really com uh, comparable to to uh oh but the party lines probably uh uh blew it up so 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 yeah you you are right it's it's not really like uh good example for this <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I understand what you're talking about so yeah and then the party lines yeah once we if we remove that then it'll be a lot better i think so oh, yeah. i think that's i i don't know uh so vila your video is cutting out but you know we're we're near the end we're we're at 115 right now so really appreciate you coming on vila uh kind of great to see you uh and justin as well <laughs> always here uh, it's great uh uh Samali and Mel and everybody else out there, uh, Roland, Thomas, appreciate him coming out today. So uh, I hope yeah. I didn't miss anybody. And uh, and, and and greetings to um, Samali also because we we are like the only Finns uh, active in, in in the EOS community or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So all right. Yeah. So let, let's get excited about the coming six weeks uh, and then beginning of the new year, the, the, the referendum vote. Excited to, 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 to have this actually, you know, get to get, get started with uh, the new, new constitution. So, um, all right. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you uh, next week, uh, Vile, hopefully. And uh, let me know how everything goes. Yep. There. Uh, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Have a good night, guys. No, Justin Rowland. Uh, take Bye. care. Take care. Bye.